I think I need a holiday. Yeah, I definitely do. So it's been a mad couple of weeks moving house. There's been loads to do, a lot more than I anticipated, to be honest. And yeah, I think next time I'm just going to pay someone to do it for me because, it, like I said in the previous video, it's been pretty crazy anyway. Um, so I won't bore you with all that detail. We'll just get straight into the topic. We're going to be talking about labels and annotations in this video. I'm going to do as little editing as possible because I'm recording this on the 20th of May, which was hopefully yesterday in terms of me releasing this video on the Sunday. And I really don't have time to edit. I really don't have time to do long videos at the moment. So yeah, I'm just blemishes and all, and unless it's really bad, in which case I might cut it, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So I'm just going to go straight into it. Okay. Let's talk about labels and annotations. See that fancy transition. There we go. That's where we're at. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got deployed at the moment. We've got QCTL, get pod, namespace learning. And in here, we've got the three Nginx deployments here. So these three Nginx deployments are the ones we deployed originally. There's nothing fancy going on here. They are what they are. They have the app label that we put on and we're gonna just add a couple of extra bits. Okay, so let's take a look at what we had. This is what we had. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy of that. And I'll call it deployment two. I'm not even going to make new folders or anything here. I'm going to call this again because that's how creative I'm feeling. We'll stick that on to the end of all of them. In fact, no, I won't do that for the app because this will be a good example. Uh, I'll add a new label though called owner Drew. Okay, so we, oh dear, that did not quite work, did it? Let me just copy and paste those again and tab that in. And we'll grab that one more time, tab it in. And let me just check everything out. So deployment again, it's got the same app label, but a different owner label. Now, before I do deploy this, it's worth noting that with the owner references and the pod hash uh, ID that it adds as a label, there's not gonna be any confusion. You know, a different replica set's not gonna start picking this up going, hey, that's got the same app label. That's, that's not how it works. Remember, owner references on the uh, pod, references the replica set. Replica set uses the app Nginx in this case and the previous case, but also in this one, it's got the owner Drew and it also tags its own pod hash. So don't worry about any confusion on replica set there. But what I'll do is I'll quickly go ahead and apply this and we will QCTL. You could see I was tagging something then uh, apply 10, what was it? Deployment two. And uh, we'll just go ahead and apply that. So let's jump back over here. And we should now see both of those pots, both of those deployments with pots. Okay. So let's take a look at labels first. Okay. So there's a one way of looking at labels and that is, well, th there's the main way of looking at labels. So all we have to do is tag show labels on the end. So hyphen hyphen show labels. And there we go. Well, I'm pretty sure I showed this in the previous video anyway, but just for the sake of it, We've got App Nginx on all of them. We have owner Drew on the new ones and we have the pod template hash. I said pod hash ID, that's the one I mentored. Mentored, meant, uh, that, that the replica set adds. Okay, so here we have it. That's, that's it, there's all your labels for these particular pods. Now, what if I wanted to select all pods that only have the owner Drew label? Easy, okay. Not sure why that's pending. I'm going to ignore that for now because I don't really care about that. This is about labels and annotations, not why that particular pod isn't deploying. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so how do we select that particular pods using that label? So I'll do kubectl, get pod, namespace learning, and then we use the selector. So uh, it's flag, selector flag. So selector, or for the sake of simplicity, hyphen L, lowercase L is important to note. And if we do that, and I put uh, just owner equals Drew, this will only return the pods that have that particular label. It won't tell us the label. If we wanna see it, we can stick show labels on the end again, and it will show us those labels. But it's picking up any pods that have the owner equals Drew label, or the key of owner, the value of Drew. And there it is, that's it. I've just selected all those three pods using that particular one. What if I have a scenario where I have 
you know, a key of app and a value of Nginx. Well, I do, because I have all these pods that have it. So let's check that out and see what happens. So I'm going to change owner equals Drew to app equals Nginx. And there we go. There's all those pods. So yeah, that's that's it. I can interact with Kubernetes and select via labels. Say this is the particular label I'm looking for. Is there any pods with that label? Now, just to show you how that works, if I go ahead and just look in the cube system namespace, for example, for the label app equals nginx or the key app value nginx, there's nothing there because there are no pods in that namespace with this particular label set, okay? And that's basically what labels for. So I've, I've, we know about the replica sets and how they're useful there. We've talked about that in previous videos, but it's also useful for us as users. We can come along and say, I want pods that have these particular labels. So that's really good. Another way we can use labels to not identify pods, but maybe we have a bunch of pods and we just wanna go, do you know what? I need to look at all the pods, but I only need to look at the ones that have a particular label. So make it easy to stand out essentially. So I guess a case in point, I'm just gonna show you. It'll be easier. What I mean by it is label columns, okay? So hyphen capital L is label columns. And I can say, I'm looking for the app label. Okay, so what this will do is it'll add, add a column to the output. I'll just show you. And in the cube system namespace, there's nothing in it. There's no label in that app column. Okay, but if I take it back to the learning namespace, if I spell learning right as well, maybe I need to learn how to spell learning. We can see here we've got the nginx value under app. Now, if I just change that to something, nothing will come up because there is no label with something as the key. So it can be quite useful if you have a bunch of pods that, you know, you, you don't know much about them. You don't really know the label, but you know it's got a key. For example, I know some of these pods have an owner key, but I don't know it's equal to Drew, for example. You know, like I did that example where I did owner equals Drew. In this case, I know there's a label called owner. I don't know, it has a value of Drew. What if I don't know the value of it, but I know it's got owner? Well, I can spit all the pods out in this namespace, use this label column, and straight away I can go, oh, right, okay. <laughs> when it loads, which for some reason it's now just stopped. Oh, this is typical, isn't it? Of course it's going to fail. I might have to cut here. Okay, so I did have to cut there. I'm not sure what happened. Everything timed out, but I'm just going to run that command again, and we can see all the pods got spat out. But this time we've got this owner column, and only three of them have the value drew. So I knew there was a a key of owner in the labels section, but I didn't know what the value was. Now I do. I know that those val those pods have that value of Drew and I know they have the key of owner in terms of the label. So you can identify pods that way as well. Not a great example, but you kind of get the point. Maybe I'm looking for the pods that I own and I don't know my own name for some reason. You know, I don't know, something like that or someone else owns. So that's kind of labels. You can use them for selecting, you can use them for identifying things, and obviously the, the system can use them as well in terms of replica sets, identifying pods. That's where labels come in really quite useful. Okay, so I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention about labels here. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, to be honest, the, the main scenario you would use them for is like app equals something, maybe have like a tier, um, and that tier is production, and development or something like that. You know, you, they can be good for identifying things, but they're also good for separating things out. So I think that's pretty much it on labels I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about um, annotations now, and annotations are a little bit confusing when you first start looking at them because they don't really do anything on the face of it. Now, I can't, I can't do anything with an annotation here. I can't select an annotation. I can't show an annotation. I can't do anything other than maybe output the YAML and read the annotation that way. But they're commonly used to store information or, I don't know, contact details or configuration data or something like that. So the, the, the underlying pod might make use of an annotation if its code is written to do so. So I guess an example of that would be, um, maybe you've got a, a binary that sits inside a pod and that binary is written in Golang and it makes use of the Kubernetes client Go library. And using that, you can interact with Kubernetes at the API and look for a particular annotation. Maybe you've got something like, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna randomly come up with something really quick. It's probably not gonna be great, but maybe you have an annotation. And that annotation is, 
Uh, I don't know. I can't even think of an example off the top of my head here. So uh, it has uh, config is development. I don't know. It's not a great example, but here, I'm just going to walk through. A, I'm, I'm literally spitballing this as, as I'm recording now. So let's say I have uh, an annotation of config and it's equal to development. And the other option I can have is production. And what this does is on the app underneath, it configures it to run in a certain way. Maybe in if it's set to development, there's a database string inside that gets set to point to a development database backend. Uh, if it was production or prod or something like that, the database string gets configured to point at a production uh, endpoint. It's a really bad example, I think. Maybe that's a good example. I don't know. But that is a way it might work. So my binary can read the annotation and go, oh, this, this particular deployment is actually deployed in prod. Yeah, I could look at a label, I could have a tier or something like that. Um, but this is where the, the app itself, rather than Kubernetes just having a label and me identifying something based on it, the actual application that sits inside the pod can make use of an annotation and say, oh, this annotation is set to this, I'm going to do this with it. I guess an example of it would be, a better example, should I say, would be uh, Nginx Ingress Controller. So I'm just going to quickly get up the Nginx Ingress Controller page and we'll take a look at the annotations for that. So the Nginx Ingress Controller, we've not been through this yet, by the way, so don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about. And that's not the page I was looking for. So let me just come back and click on this one. That'll do. And this one here has a bunch of annotations. So we'll get into Ingress soon. Don't worry too much about it. It's just incoming traffic, essentially, and how we manage it. Nginx, I'm going to presume you've maybe heard of. If you haven't, again, don't worry about it. It's not too much to worry about, but generally speaking, it's used as a web server. You can use it as a reverse proxy, which, again, if you don't know what that is, don't worry too much about it. But basically, these annotations here allow us to set values which configure the underlying Nginx service that runs within the pod and manages ingress traffic coming into the cluster. So let's say someone is running a website in a pod. They then set up a service, they set up an ingress. The ingress is the thing that points towards the internet, essentially. So someone goes to www.example.com, that comes in, it hits the um, the ingress, if you like, the ingress resource, the Nginx ingress controller manages that resource, and it comes through, and based on certain annotations, it will get fed through to the backend pod, and then data will be returned, and you'll see the website. And maybe we need a password on that website because we don't want people just being able to access it. Well, what we can do is we can set an annotation called auth type and we can set that to basic. And then there's a couple of other annotations we can use to say, yeah, these are the usernames and passwords we're going to use. And Nginx will be configured underneath for that particular ingress resource, not all of them, to prompt for a username and password. Like we'll just pop up at the top of the browser and say, this website needs username and password, put it in here. Okay, so that's one example. You can also set up things like um, SSL, backend protocols, a bunch of stuff, okay? And that's pretty much what I'm going to go through on annotations. I, I, again, this you'd need to know a little bit more about Nginx Ingress controllers or Nginx in itself. And if you don't, this could get a bit confusing quite quickly. But the, the fundamental thing to understand is that annotations are used for things like configuration data or details regarding the deployment so if you deploy something via helm which again we've not talked about yet we've not touched on yet but don't worry too much about it it's essentially a templating system that allows us to uh, write a bunch of yaml files and then just say helm install something okay and when you do that something you don't just get a deployment you get the deployment the service the ingress the custom resource definitions anything that that particular sort of thing needs then you'll get it as part of helm we will touch on this very much later on. Don't worry about it too much for now, but it's an example. But when you deploy stuff via Helm, you'll get labels and annotations that basically say Helm has deployed this particular thing and Helm then knows that it's deployed those things. So should you try and do an upgrade, it'll be like, oh yeah, that's that's me. I manage that. Here's the upgrade. So yeah, that's, that's kind of another scenario I guess you do use annotations for. And to be honest, I think that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it because that, that they're the two points, you know, labels and annotations. I said it would be short and it's pretty short. So in the next video, we'll be talking about, I think off the top of my head, we'll be talking about storage classes, uh, persistent volumes and persistent volume claims and access modes, things like that. 
hopefully I'll be back to my normal format. We will see. And yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's been a bit of a rough one today, as you saw. It's It's pretty much as it is. I think I might have cut it once or twice. And yeah, next week, hopefully, we'll be back to normal. Next week, hopefully, we'll be back to normal format. And there'll be more context and content. And you won't have to sit and listen to me just rambling on. So with all that in mind, I'll see you in the next one.